Hi everyone, I am Robert Wittkamp and uh, this online lecture will continue the objective of all my YouTube lectures on classical Japanese literature, which is read the original text. However, this lecture is not on Basho's Okunozumichi, but on the Kojiki, the earliest extant work of uh, Japanese literature. One reason to prepare this lecture was a recent discussion on the mailing list PMJS, Pre-Modern Japanese Studies. Someone was interested in getting some advice on good recommendations on Kojiki and Nihon Shoki, the Chronicles of Japan, which is the first one of six official chronicles. It was submitted in 720, only eight years after Kojiki. A discussion developed which raised again the question in me personally by what one can measure or decide the quality of a translation of such a difficult work. The Kojiki has a long history of translation and it is clear that 140 years ago English was spoken differently than it is today. This is probably one of the reasons why important works of world literature are retranslated every now and then. But that's not what I am about. The Kojiki is an extremely complex uh, text as far as its writing is concerned, so much so that a well-known essay from 1957 bears, bears the title Kojiki wa Yomeruka. Is the Kojiki readable? Of course, the scholar Kamei Takashi was not concerned with whether the text is intelligible. What he meant was rather the problem of reading aloud, reading with voice. And this question is one of the problems I will explore in this lecture. Fortunately, the Kojiki has a preface that provides information about the circumstances of its creation and submission to the court. This preface is a great treasure, as it contains the first Japanese reflections on writing. It is written in Chinese style, but the main text itself is written in Chinese, mixed with old Japanese elements. Some people think that the main text is primitive and archaic, but uh, this is a big misunderstanding. Within the history of the development of Japanese narrative texts, the Kojiki is a big step forward, leading away from writing in classical Chinese style, or as David B. Lurie explains, the Kojiki is choose the outward structure of orthodox Chinese style while covertly relying on it to engineer a new vernacular style. The text is an attempt to take Japanese peculiarities into account and we will see what this means. Be that as it may, these peculiarities belong to the problems of, uh, of the text which led Kamei Takashi to the question of whether the text is readable. And this, of course, also concerns the question of whether the text is translatable. What I do in this lecture is the following. First, I read the reflections on writing from the preface. In it, special problems and their solutions are mentioned, which I will then explain with a few examples. On this basis, we will then take a look at the translations. The first translation was made by Basil Hall Chamberlain in 1882. In 1968, Donald Philippi, I hope this pronunciation is correct, Donald Philippi produced a new English translation and both translations have an introduction and ample notes and explanations. In 2014, the third translation by Gustav Held followed, which contains an introduction but no notes. Before taking a look at the preface, I would like to shortly clarify something. The translations of Chamberlain and Philippi are different. Nevertheless, both transla translations belong to what I call the modern paradigm. Since the late 1960s, however, in Japan, a research, a research direction called Sakuhin Ron has uh, increasingly gained influence. Sakuhin means work in English and Sakuhin Ron can be translated as work discourse. However, since uh, the method is a close reading, I have translated Sakuhin Ron as text immanence based analysis to avoid confusing with uh, close reading approaches in American literature studies. In the introduction to the latest Kojiki translation, 
Gustav Falk writes that the body of his translation is based on the Shinpe Nihon Koten Bungaku Zenshu edition by Yamaguchi Yoshinori and Konoshi Takamitsu. It is from the year 1997 and I consider it to be the standard edition today. Konoshi is the best known and most radical representative of the Sakuin Ron, and therefore it is also necessary to show what the reference to the standard edition means. Of course, I cannot go uh, into too much detail, but we should be aware that Japanese research has made great progress since the 1960s. This too should uh, finally be reason enough for a new translation. Well, let's get started. What we see here is an excerpt from the Kojiki preface, which contains the reflections on text writing. I divide this excerpt into four sections to make it easier to read. This is the first section presented together with the translation into modern Japanese by Yamaguchi and Konoshi and the most recent translation into English by Gustav Held. We see that the three paragraphs correspond to the three sentences in the original text. I'm going to read the original text in English. Uh, but in high antiquity, both words and their meanings were simple, making it difficult to write them out in sentences and form them into phrases. If the account were to use characters only for their meaning, then the words would not correspond exactly with what was intended. But if the record were to rely on characters only for their sound, then it would grow long and hard to get through. What the author of the preface addresses here are the two principal ways of writing old Japanese texts with Chinese characters, using them as logograms or as phonograms, kunji or kana in Japanese. Logograms used to be called ideograms, but uh, today we know that they are not just ideograms, but words, because their sound, their pronunciation also uh, is considered. The second section. Thus, at times a single sentence may combine characters used for their spoken sound with those used for their written sense, while uh, at other times a single affair is recorded using only the letter. In this translation, the word sentences is slightly misleading and phrases would be better. I would like to explain this briefly. Here we see different words that are written combined. Simply put, naki isachi ki means to cry, kamu yarahi yarahi ki is usually translated as to expel, but uh, that I think that might be wrong. Tachi hashiri isuki means to run away in panic. Mi shimeki is to make someone show something, and uh, maoshi tsuraku introduces direct speech. It is important to see that these words are written in a mixture of logograms and phonograms, and uh, it is important to see that these words are striking. Furthermore, we need to think about why these words were written in this rather complicated way. Perhaps there was something that uh, could not be expressed in Chinese writing. We need to take a look at these characters, which uh, have been highlighted in red. They read Qi, and that means that the name of the creator spirit which is written with the same character, is Izanaki and not Izanagi. Yamaguchi and Konishi also read Izanaki, but held in the glossary of personal names reads the name Izanagi. By the way, I am unable to determine the differences between deities, spirits, and so on. However, the Kojiki makes a distinction between Kami and Mikoto, Mikoto being the executors of orders. In Kojiki, for example, Izanaki and Izanami act on the command of the Amatsukami, the spirits of heaven, but in Nihonshoki, they act independently. The syllables Ki in these words mark the past tense, and for this reason we can read the entire Kojiki text in the past tense. The, Nihon, the Nihonshoki is different because uh, it is written in Chinese style, without past tense. Chinese style is written tense-free, or in the so-called historical present tense, uh, Rekshiteki Genzai in Japanese, 
Of course, logically, the story is in the past tense, otherwise it would not be on the page. Other expressions are written completely phonographically. Uh, there could be several reasons for this. Koboro koboro is an onomatopoeic expression and I will come back to it. The noun ukehi, ukepi, and the verb ukefu, ukepu, possess a special meaning for which perhaps no Chinese words could be found. A similar expression, seiyaku in modern Japanese, occurs instead in the Nihon Shoki, but probably loses the special color. Wokishi means to draw out, to lure out, and I have shown elsewhere that this word serves as an important link between two episodes from the myths. Mito Atahashitsu, in turn, is very specific. It is from the story of O Kuninushi when he still was called O Anamuchi. Held translates as she, whose name is uh, Yakami Hime, she was still sleeping with her husband. However, to say that, you don't need this complex inscription and Chinese style would have been sufficient. Mito is sleeping place or perhaps female sexual organs. And atafu means something like to offer or to share. Atahasu is polite form and tsu usually is understood as aspect, such as is doing in English. But I think uh, that here it means the completion of an action. It means that the woman slept with a spirit only once, just as she had promised to him. Therefore, there was only one child, which is extremely unusual for a spirit or a deity. After sharing the bed with him once, she left him, leaving the child she had born wedged in, the, in a tree fork. This brings me to the next section. In English it is, when the logic of a sentence is hard to make out, it is clarified with a note, but when the, uh, when the intended import is easy to grasp, no note is given. I'll have to explain that in more detail. Basically, there are two different types of chu, notes or annotations. There are annotations explaining the reading or pronunciation, and uh, annotations that explain something else. The first three annotations are about pronunciation or reading. The kunchu explains how a Chinese character is read in Japanese. David Piluri translates as a logographic note. The Seichu explains how the words belong together. The annotation in this example ensures that the name is read Toyo Kumono no Kami and not Toyo Kumono no no Kami. The On Chu states that the previously mentioned characters are phonograms. The so-called on in chu occur only in the folk songs, and uh, the next four types are called kai setsu chu, that is, notes explaining something, for example, names, general explanations, dates, and so on. The first and the third type are important for us, and a question is how to take them into account in the translation. I personally think that uh, they are a part of the text and they must be translated as well. Here, for example, we see the first sentence from the Kojiki Book 1. The annotation is written with smaller characters and in two lines, and it indicates that the character number 9 from the top, highlighted in light blue, is to be read Ama. Therefore, the name of the high plains of heaven is Taka Ama Nohara, and presumably not Takama Nohara. Annotations are in many cases uh, placed directly after the word to which they refer. Here, however, it is placed at the, at the end of the sentence and we can already see here that annotation, annotations also fulfill other tasks or functions. The first sentence show, shows very nicely the, uh, what Kame Takashi meant by his question whether the koji could, could be read. What you see here is only a selection of different readings, and there are more. I have marked the two verbs in red, and the second verb is not much of a problem, although the readings seem so different. The base form is naru, 
and the readings differ in their grammatical realizations. Are they in the past tense, nariki, or do they have a polite form, narasu, or both, narashiki? Yamaguchi and Konishi read without polite form, but sentences 2, 3 and 4 are with polite form su. Numbers 2 and 4 usually uh, use the auxiliary verb ri to indicate aspect. Sentences 3 and 5 are in past tense, but 1, 2 and 4 are not. Apart from these decisions, only the first sentence gives a different reading by adding izuru to go out, to step out. But that was long before Motori Norinaga. A bigger problem, however, is the first verb. The verb hiraku, hiraku, here in uh, attributive form hirakuru in the first reading, means to divide. And uh, this reading goes back to the Kojiki preface. For there it is uh, said in the cosmogony that in the beginning heaven and earth divided. The same idea we can find in Nihon Shoki main text cosmogony. However, the character does not mean to divide, but to begin to move in a certain direction or to appear. I think that Motori Norinaga, the author of the second sentence, had recognized the problem in his translation. He avoided it by not translating as a verb, but as Hajime no Toki. As seen, Yamaguchi and Konoshi are the representatives of the Sakohinron. A typical method of this research direction is the comparison with, other, uh, with the other occurrence of the same character within the work. And those other characters show that it cannot mean, cannot mean to divide, as it is uh, translated in a recent German translation. Let us now take a look at the three English translations. Chamberlain and Held translate the names and Philippi reads Takama. However, Held has a glossary and uh, there the name is also uh, Takama. But as we have seen, the, uh, the annotation requires to read the character Ama. Thus, it must be read uh, Takama. Chamberlain, Chamberlain translates Naru, the second verb, as were born. But the Kojiki makes a strict distinction between Naru and Umu, which is to give birth. I have shown this in more detail in an essay available as a PDF if you are interested. I cannot say whether came about or came into existence is better. What is important is that the difference to Umu, the, uh, to give birth, remains recognizable, the whole text. Furthermore, we can see that Philippi does not translate the original text but Motori Norinaga's translation as Hajime no Toki, which is at the time of the beginning in Philippi's translation. This is, by the way, what Karl Florenz did in his translation into German from 1919 as well. Florenz uh, translated the Kojiki myths completely, but the other two books only in parts. Uh, that was a long explanation of the third section from the Kojiki preface and now I come to the last section. Also, clan titles such as Kusaka and personal names such as Tarashi have been left in the characters with which they are traditionally written. Here uh, I don't really have to explain much but there is a most interesting detail. What Held translates as traditionally written presumably inspired by Philip Pai's uh, traditional way of writing, is in the original text the character that I have marked in red. Yamaguchi and Konoshi provide a note to the character and it says as follows. This phrase indicates that the material on which Yama uh, Yasumaru was based was bunken, which is literature, written material. Especially Konji tries to fight against the idea that Yasumaru wrote down the, uh, the oral report of a certain person called Hiera no Are. And we can also see from this annotation that it was imperative for Yamaguchi and Konoshi to understand the character in terms of written text. 
Okay, this brings me to the first expression written exclusively with phonograms. In Chamberlain's translation, translation it is Hereupon all the heavenly deities commanded the two deities, his augustness Izanaki and her augustness Izanami, ordering them to make, consolidate and to give birth to this drifting land. Granting to them a heavenly jeweled spear, they thus deigned to charge them. So the two deities standing upon the floating bridge of heaven pushed down the jeweled spear and steered with it, whereupon when they had stiffed the brine till it went curdle curdle and drew the spear up, the brine that drips down from the end of the spear was piled up and became an island. This is the island Onogoro. The term Koboro Koboro is translated as curdle curdle and the translation is striking enough to stand out from the text. Philippi and Held also translate with a similar conspicuous expressions. Why was this expression necessary? The Neon Shoki gets along without it. One reason, of course, could be to make the narration more uh, lively, but there seems to be another reason that is more likely. The expression occurs in a, a second time in the book of Yuriaku, which is contained in the third Kojiki volume. There is an episode in which a girl served uh, the ruler something to drink. Unfortunately, a leaf from a tree fell into the cup, which made the ruler very angry. To appease him, the girl sang a song, and this song also contains the, the expression koboro koboro. It is important to note that the girl was from Ise, and uh, the striking expression thus connects through the expression koboro koboro connects the myths of the origin to, uh, of the first island with Ise. I have shown elsewhere that uh, there are other connections of this type in Kojiki. In the translation it is of course important to use the same expressions. If this is not conspicuous enough, the reader will not recognize it, but I believe that the problem is solved in all three English translations. By the way, here we can see well that uh, the annotation is made directly after the expression. The note which I have marked in green here is a kunju, a logographic note. It says that the preceding character is to be read, read tatashi, which is tatsu to stand in polite form, tatasu, and attributive tatashi. The note makes sure that the two creator spirits were standing on the bridge and not that they built the bridge. The auxiliary verb su raises the question of whether the other verb connected with the two spirits should also be read in polite form. Yamaguchi and Konoshi, however, do not do this. Furthermore, we can see that uh, Chamberlain again translated Naru as give birth which is incorrect. There is also a problem uh, with Hell's translation. The note I have marked in light blue is another logographic note, saying Nashi. The character is not difficult to read and hardly needs a note, but here it ensures that it is the transitive verb Nasu. It is a small detail, but the matter was apparently so important to have to add a note. The next examples are also from the myths. After Susano came into being and his tasks were assigned to him, he began to cry violently. His father Izanaki allowed him to leave and Susano left. Before that, however, he wanted to visit his sister Amaterasu in heaven and went up. Amaterasu feared that Susano wanted to destroy her kingdom and she confronted him heavily, heavily, heavily armed. The following passage contains three expressions with phonograms, but I limit myself uh, to one of them. The text you can see here is the statement of Susano O to his sister delivered in direct speech. The character marked in red here introduces a direct speech in classical Chinese texts. Yamaguchi and Konoshi read Maoshi Shiku which is maosu, to speak, combined with the auxiliary 
were sued for polite form and coup, introducing direct speech. Everything that follows is figure speech. Susan O speaking to his sister Amaterasu. I have no evil intentions. It is merely that the great deity divinely inquired about my weeping and holing. I said that I was weeping because I wished to go to the land of my mother. Then the great deity said, you may not live in this land and expelled me with a divine expulsion. Whereupon I came up intending to take leave upon my departure. I have no other intentions. Here we see that the Chinese character introducing direct speech occurs once again, but this time within the figure speech. It is written with the logogram for Mao Su and the phonograms Tsuraku, and we have to read Mao Shi Tsuraku. Normally, the character does not have phonograms because they are not necessary in classical Chinese texts. As we saw, the character itself reads Maosu in old, uh, old Japanese, but before direct speech, it is Maoshiku or Maoshishiku or as here Maoshitsuraku. The expression, of course, is not Inikui or Itsurai as in modern Japanese, which is something like it is difficult to say, but if one does not know the so-called ku nominalization introducing direct speech, uh, which also can be raku, one should not translate old Japanese texts. The question is why the expression in this passage had to be written with phonograms. As we saw, the whole text passage is the direct speech of Susano O, and in this direct figure speech, Susano O quotes himself. So it is a direct figure speech within direct figure speech. That's pretty awesome. However, this does not yet answer the question of the necessity for writing with phonograms. In my opinion, the meaning lies in the emphasis, so it should be read in the translation, for example, and you know, men, this is what I said to him. I think that uh, can definitely be read as humor. Chamberlain translated with direct figure speech and Philippi with indirect figure speech. In Hell's version, the quotation marks are confusing and I think his translation also is too weak. In all translations, there is no difference between Maoshi Shiku at the beginning of Susanoo's speech and Maoshi Tsuraku. My next and final example is from the third volume. It is, one, uh, it is from one of the most famous st stories, that of Yamato Takeru no Mikoto, who was sent by his father to Kyushu to subdue the rebellious Kumaso brothers. To join a party, he dressed up as a pretty girl and he, did, uh, he hid his sword under his skirt. When everyone was drunk, he pulled out the sword and killed the, the elder brother. The younger brother saw this and wanted to flee, but the slayer grabbed his back and stabbed him in the rear. In this situation, a dialogue arose between the two, in Chamberlain's translation. Then the Kumaso Bravo spoke, saying, Do not move this word. I have something to say. Then the, the slayer respited him for a moment, holding him down as he lay prostrate. Hereupon the younger brother said, Who is thine Augustness? Then he said, I am the August child of Oho Tarashi Hiko Oshiro Wake, the heavenly sovereign who, dwelling in the palace of Hishiro at Makimuku, rules the land of the eight great islands. And my name is King Yamato Oguna. Hearing that you two fellows, the Kumaso Bravos, were unsubmissive and disrespectful, the heavenly sovereign sent me with the command to take and slay you. Then the Kumaso Bravo said, that must be true. There are no persons in the West so brave and strong as uh, we do. Yet in the land of great Yamato, there is a man braver than we do. There is. Therefore, I will offer thee an August name. 
from this time forward, it is right that Tho be praised as the August child Yamato Take. As soon as he had finished saying this, the prince ripped him up like a ripe melon. Here we see again the character that introduces literal speech, but this time it is the literal speech of a man who has a sword in his buttocks. There are, of course, uh, some differences in the three translations, but I'm only concerned with the passage that I have marked in Chamberlain's and underlined in health, health versions. We cannot find a comparable expression in Philippi's text. The question is, where does health get the and now I see, which does not occur in Chamberlain's translation? To answer, we need, to, we need to take a closer look uh, at the original text. On the left side is the original text, which cannot be read in Chinese because it has some Japanese expressions and peculiarities. Important for us are the marked characters, which are uh, read imashikeri. The predicate imasu is at the end of the sentence in Japanese syntax, and has the auxiliary verb keri. In the original text, the expression is quickly noticed, but not in the so-called kakikudashi text on the right side, which contains many hiragana phonograms. Again, we must ask why the auxiliary verb was necessary. First, the meaning must be clarified. Keri in Old Japanese is not the, the keri, keri in storytelling uh, in Heian Monogatari literature, but the so-called Kizuki no Keri. Something already exists for a while, but was not perceived. Suddenly, however, one notices it. Now we have to look at the situation again. So there is this poor guy lying on the ground with a sword in his buttocks. And in this situation, he has a sudden realization and says, Choto, Choto, Choto Mateo. If that's not humor, I don't know what humor is. Apparently, Chamberlain had recognized the phonograms, but his translation turns out to be too weak. Philippi only puts an exclamation mark but uh, that also exists at the end of the figure speech. His translation is therefore not acceptable. Held, on the other hand, translates the auxiliary verb keri into uh, but now I see and he hits the nail on the head. Therefore, we can see a clear improvement in this. Hell's translations deviate from Yamaguchi and Konoshi's readings in some details. For example, there is uh, the realm called Yam uh, Yomotsukuni and Held translates as Land of the Underworld. Yamaguchi and Konoshi add a special note in which they doubt that Yomotsukuni is neither an underworld nor a realm of the dead. Like the stubborn adherence to the name Izanagi, which is Izanaki, the idea of uh, the underworld persists. Another example is the word kotomuke, which held translates as subdue, although Yamaguchi and Konoshi oppose such a reading. Konoshi's readings are sometimes radical and, uh, and are also criticized in part. However, uh, we know today that the Kojiki formulated certain contexts very carefully, and this must be taken into account in the translation. To say it again at the end of the, uh, this lecture, the Kojiki is a special text in terms of how it is written. Apart from the difficulties of content, a translation must also grasp the peculiarities of the written text. The Kojiki has much more difficulties, for example, in terms of narration. I recommend every translator to read very carefully Yamaguchi and Konoshi's introduction to their Kojiki edition. Either way, many problems that had not been solved in Chamberlain's or Philippi's translations have been solved later and research has not, not stopped with uh, the Sakuin Ron. Research continues and therefore the Kojiki must also be retranslated at some point. Personally, I am looking forward to it, be it in English 
be it in German and hopefully in other languages as well. Thank you very much.